Okay, well, welcome to On Point Live, uh, right here from the Manhattan Beach Studios. And both Jackie Slater and I are here to, uh, to bring you some great interviews, Jackie. And, you know, we got a real special guest coming on right now. He's a guy that we both played with. He's a Hall of Famer. Jackie, they retired his jersey with the Los Angeles Rams. None other than... Eric, Eric Dickerson, Dickerson, you know, I mean, he's, he's a pretty special guy. There's no doubt about it. And, and I'm particularly delighted to have the opportunity uh, to visit with him now and have our fans get to know Eric Dickerson. I remember uh, when he came to the Rams uh, in 1983, there was a sense for me of familiarity of having a great running back because I played with Walter Payton for three years in college at Jackson State, and I knew I knew what a guy like Eric Dickinson was going to bring to our football team. I'm sure everybody yes. else knew, but I knew it intimately because I played with Walter for three years, and this guy was very unique. Uh, I remember Eric as a young, brash, offensive uh, running back. He said to me, he, he, he watched me practice, and he said to me one day, he said, hey, Jackie, he said, have you ever been to the Pro Bowl? And I mm -hmm. said, no, but I'm working towards it. And he looked at me, and he said, you're going this year. And, and it was because of the confidence that he had in his ability. And he had watched me practice and watched me, you know, the work that I put into executing those run blocks and everything. And he, I think he just felt that it was going to give him an opportunity to be special. You mentioned it earlier, this 1,808 yards. He set the rookie rushing record uh, with, that, with that amount of yards. And 20 then, touchdowns. And, and then the very next year, he set the single season rushing record, which was held by his hero, O.J. Simpson as he ran for 2,108 yards, I believe it was. Just a dynamic, uh, young, and talented player. And it, it was amazing to watch him grow. And one other thing about, about him, I, I, sent him a, I sent him a text message. I took a picture of, on my phone a couple of weeks ago. And that picture listed all of the top runners, the top 10 runners in NFL history, yards wide. And he's on that list in the top 10. And I sent him a text message, actually, and I said, look at this list. Mm -hmm. I said, do you think for one moment that I don't envy these guys? Because if you had stayed with the Rams, you would be the top guy on this list. And that Probably. was one of the things that I... I well, I, he I, hated I, to leave, I'm sure. He did. Well, he, 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 he hated to leave, but he agreed with me. Yeah. Yeah. I think he, uh, and he, and he was very respectful, very respectful of Walter Payton, very respectful of every great running back on that list. But Eric knew his talent. Someone convinced him and showed him that he was a very talented running back, that there were very few men his size that were as fast as him or as elusive as he was that understand, understood what running with the football, the technique of running with the football uh, was all about. And he knew that. when, as a, as a rookie, he was aware of these things. And so to see him execute that and to go through that and then to watch him leave, that, it, just, yeah, it, it was very difficult for me to, it's to have to deal it with. It was heartbreaking, Jackie. And, you know, when we first uh, joined the, the Rams back in 19, what was it, 77? For you? I got drafted. Yeah, we had a two-back system. Mm -hmm. Ray Malavasi instituted a two-back system. In 1983, when Eric was drafted in the first round, he was the John second Robinson, pick, second pick second in the first pick round. in the first round. He went to a one-back system. And, and I think John Robinson put that one-back system to showcase that great talent he had. But you and I both know the makeup of this guy. Yeah. Not only was he a oh, great yeah. athlete, Jackie, but more importantly, Jackie, he was humble. He'd get in the huddle. He, he would never complain, Jackie. He was always receptive to change. He was listened to, to what was uh, the advice that was given to him. He was always in the right position, never in the wrong position. And, you know, that, that goes a long way to be said about a great running back. It and does. How you can it uh, does. adjust and be, be able to perform each and every year at a high level. At a very high level. At a very high level. You know, you know Vince, I, I, can, I can remember there were times when some of our teammates, uh, John Robinson, came into a, he embarrassed our offensive line after one game. We played the San Francisco 49ers. We lost the game. And that wasn't the thing that was embarrassing. The thing was that was embarrassing was John Robinson looked at the video. And at the end of the play, when Eric had been tackled and he was down and the ball had been whistled dead, Ronnie Lott, in particular, and two or three other guys to, at different times would come and pound him after he was already on the ground. Wow. Just boom, just right yeah. while he was on the ground. 
And then no, none of us did anything about it. None, mm -hmm. We just stood there and watched this happen after the whistle had blown, bam, and we just pulled him up and went back to the hole. Eric never complained. He just got up and kept running. I don't think he ever even said anything to me about it or anybody else about it. Yeah. But John Robinson certainly did. And it was one of the most embarrassing days of my professional career to sit in a meeting and watch film. And listen, this particular day, John Robinson didn't just have the offense in there. He brought the offense in there, the defense in there, all the special team guys, all the coaches were sitting there watching the film. And every time Ronnie Lott would stick him after he hit the ground, John Robinson would stop the, stop the, stop the film. And wouldn't say a word. Yeah. And it, that was one of the most humbling and embarrassing uh, 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 games that I'd ever played. But the thing about that across. was Eric never said a word. Yeah. He never complained. No, he, it he was that type of a competitor. He drove his point across, which was which is a, a, a great tribute to the great coach that he was, Jackie, in the running game. And, you know, he took pride in when you ran a play. There was a reason, a rhyme to reason, why you would call that play and how to execute that play. And the guy carrying the football had as much confidence in the guys up front getting the job done as he had carrying the football to go all the way in one play. And you knew with that guy in the backfield, if I can block my guy, and it's 11 on 11, if he's one guy shy, he'll outrun that guy, he'll run over him. Well, he'll make him miss. And Vince, I'll go one step further. That guy that I was supposed to block wasn't always blocked. There were times that I just got a piece of him. Yeah. And he was halfway in the hole and halfway about to hit Eric. And, you know, the coach was going to give me a hard time for not, Eric covering, on, for not covering the guy up. But Eric was run right through arm tackles. If the guy wasn't in a position to square him up and wrap him up, those yeah. tackles weren't made until this guy was another five, six yards down the field. He was, he was yeah. unique that way. And, and uh, I just, uh, I just I, my biggest disappointment as a football player was, and, and relative to my team, having teammates, was watching him go and go to other places where I personally didn't feel that they had the offensive line that we had in Los Angeles, and he wasn't being done the justice for how good he was with the people that were blocking for him. Well, we're, we're getting an indication now that we got Eric, I think, on the line now, so we got to go back to our interview, and uh, hope you enjoy the interview. Well, welcome to On Point Live with a special edition, one of our... Uh, one of the greatest players we've ever played with, Jack. Of all what time. Yeah, we, of all time. Of all time. Right, buddy. <laughs> we want to welcome Eric Dickerson. Eric, thanks for being on and taking time out. We're lucky to have you because of this uh, real tight schedule you got. You're back east somewhere, aren't you? Yep. Th thanks, Vince. Yeah, I'm in Jackie. I'm I'm in Buffalo, New York. You know, you you out here in Buffalo. Uh, I tell you, I haven't been here since the '90s. I mean, and they, trust me, this this is all Bills country out here. Right. <laughs> totally Bills. <laughs> Bill's no country. Doubt. Nobody circles the wagons better than the nobody. Right nobody. There. Hey, go to the Apollo's restaurant. You got that right. You got to go and have great. Apollo. The, the Apollo's. The Apollo's. Okay. And ask for Dennis. He's he's the owner. Dennis. Vince, Vince will call the guy for you if yeah, you want him to. So 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 Vince, can I get? Is, is it a free meal or what? Oh yeah. Yeah, we'll, it's we'll a free meal. You, man. We'll take care of you. He even has my wine there, Eric. Hey, he, I don't, he okay. might be out there right now. You got, you got some good wine. You got some good wine, Benny. You got some good oh, yeah, wine. Man. Well, I've had we'll have to get together when you come back west. But, Eric, we got to start okay. off by asking you some couple questions. And the first one has to do with, uh, you know, the running back position. You know, in past years, it was probably one of the most premier positions in the game. Jim Brown, probably one of the, perhaps one of the best running backs ever that ever played, was a, was a great running back. Today we see guys like, Saquon Barkley, you see Josh Jacobs, Delvin Cook. They're, they're, they're out there, Jackie, as free agents. Some of them are still with their teams. They can't sign a contract. They're willing to sit out for the whole year. Is this a position that's being disrespected? And what's your take on it? You've gone, kind of gone through part of this stuff. Well, you know, when, when we played the running back, that was the guy. I mean, every, every team needed a, a great back. I mean, you go back to... The Earl Campbells, you go back to the Walter Paytons, you go back to the even O.J. O. Simpson was my favorite. You go back to the John Riggins, you go you go back to all those Barry Sanders. You, you go back, you had to have a you had to have a running back, or, or it was hard for your team to really play well or sustain. And, and it's amazing how I, I, you've heard these reporters come on air in the last like 10, fifteen or twenty years and say you don't need a running back. You know, running back you go you can get, you can just stick anyone in that position. You know, just get a couple hundred yards or or you can. You know, switch them out, and it's it's not it's not it's not like that. I mean, if you have a great back, you want you want to use him. 
Matter of fact, this was about three years ago. I asked Bruce Smith and Lawrence Taylor and Ricky Jackson this question. I said, let me let me ask you guys something. I said, if you played in the NFL and they did not run the ball one time, I mean, not once with a running back, would you like that? And all of them started laughing. They said, <laughs> no runs? <laughs> I said, no runs. All of them said at the same time, man, we love that. That would be the greatest. That would be the greatest day ever, because one thing the running back wears the running wears the defense down. Especially if you have a great back, even a good back with a, with a with a really good offensive line. You think about Emmitt Smith. You know, people may say Emmitt Smith was not the greatest back of all time. He has all the yards, but he has a great offensive line. I like Emmitt personally because he did what he did behind that offensive line. You can't take anything away from him. You know, when you can when you can punish a defense, wear a defense down. It means a lot. I mean, and I just feel like they have paid these bum, and I mean bum, nothing against the quarterbacks. I can't. I guess not, if they pay them, that's fine. But they're a bunch of bum quarterbacks, and I mean bum ass <laughs> quarterbacks, paying them thirty million dollars. I mean, I'm like thirty million. That should be <laughs> on a roster. Some of the backups make more than the running. Back. Backups making ten yeah. million dollars. I'm like, yeah. can I play quarterback as a backup? I don't even want to touch the field. <laughs> I mean, seriously, and I'm, I call it like I see it. I mean, it's not against the player because if the team is willing to do that, the player should take that money. But, I mean, literally. I mean, you can you imagine Derrick Henry? I forget. What's the quarterback name in Tennessee? What's his name? I can't think of his name. Uh, um, yeah. I can't, I can't, whatever his name is. But, yeah. but, but you've, got, you've, got, you've got Derrick Henry there. You're paying him $8 million, and you're paying, and also, you know, offense, the quarterback – He's making twenty five or thirty a year, and we can't. He's even a bum. His name. We don't even remember <laughs> his name. I, I, I can't. Thank you. I can't yeah. think of his name. I can't think of his I name. Know. I mean, I a lot of these quarterbacks. That that goes to show you right there what I'm talking about. I mean, when we played, you knew the starting quarterback's name. Well, you knew the Joe Montana. You, you know, know Eric. You're, you're, you're singing. You knew. You knew. Yeah, you're singing Jackie's song right here. Jackie. Th- there's no doubt about it, Jackie Eric. Jackie believes yeah. that 100. percent I-, I am a staunch believer yes. in the fact that you have to be able to run the football to yeah. to beat these pass rushes. Uh, you know, to 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 beat them up so they don't just get the tee off all the time. Now, Eric, you know we. Right. I don't want to be redundant, but think about this for a moment. There are 56 guys, 56 guys in the National Football League today that are making over 20 million dollars a year, and not one of them is a running back, not a single one of them. And it just seems to me that they're being devalued. They're being devalued. And and, and for the life of me, I I can't figure it out. Jackie, I I think about myself. Let's let's use me. If I I was playing in today's game, let's let's say I came in. First of all, they they should pay these guys up front. They really should pay them if they don't want to pay them on the back because they're not going to pay them on the back end. My first year, I had 390 carries. And I think uh, and I had another, I think, 50, 56 receptions for like 404 yards. So I had over 400 carries. I had 1,808 yards and 20 touchdowns. Okay, they would say that's a lot for a back. He's, he's worn out. You know, you, you're wearing him out. Right. The next year I came back, I had, I had, I had 404 carries for, eight, for, for 2,105. Okay. The next year I came back, I held out. Held out and missed four games and had almost 1,300 yards. The next year I came back, 1,821. I mean, and that's using the back. You really you use the running back. And I think think about you know these guys like a Derrick Henry, a, a Nick Chubb, a Juan Barkley, a Christian McCaffrey. You know, Christian McCaffrey, he's making he's making his money. I mean, he is. I, th- I think a lot of it they talk early and try to blame, blame Todd Gurley. Oh, they paid Todd Gurley all the money, you know, and he didn't produce. Well, first of all, Todd carried the Rams for a long time. You know, I mean, let's just be honest. That running game, he he, he had 1,400, 1,300, 1,500 yards and, and, and another, like, three 400 receiving. I mean, if it wasn't for him, I don't think we would have been in the position we were in. And I think people have a tendency to forget that. I mean, mm-hmm. I just don't understand it, how they feel like the running back is, is, is not important on a football team. But, you know, the reporters to me have started this, and I can't think of the guy's name who started this. You know, I know when they do, when they do the, the draft. Um, I can't, I can't the dark haired guys, but he, he said this years ago, you don't need a back. You know, you can stick anyone in there. Wow. That's BS, man. I mean, that's BS. That's, that's, I, that's I, BS. You, Eric, you have to, you, you have to have, you have to have a back. Yeah, yeah, you, and Eric, you know what? You, you have to have them for a lot of reasons. 
if you want the offensive lineman to be successful, you can't just ask them to pass block all day long. You need to have, they need to have an opportunity, not only to run the football, in my opinion, but to have a variety of different types of runs to make those defensive ball players have to guess at the line of scrimmage. Now, Eric, you know, there are a lot of, there are a lot of backs. There are a lot of backs right now. Every team's got one at least. And there are a few teams got a pretty good one. But, uh, you know, when I think about you, man, I, it's, it's, you know how I am. I'm biased. You, you, you're the best of all time in my mind. I don't think there's anybody that I, I know I never played with a guy in the pros better than you. And I don't think I ever saw a guy that I felt was better than you. But if you were to look at these backs today, is there one guy that you, you say to yourself, hey, he, he, I, like, I like this guy. I, he reminds me of myself. Is there one guy in the league well, that you... Well, you know, I, I look at I look at a guy like a like a Derrick Henry who has done it repeatedly, pretty much. When they made him the guy, he, he's he's proven that he he can carry the load, but they don't pay him like he can carry the load. You know, I look at a guy like Nick Chubb, who has really split time and has been so successful. Think about this, Jackie, in Cleveland and in, back in our day, we used to call Cleveland the Cleveland Clowns. I mean, they were like bozos. I mean, right. but but they they have they have a they have a, a, a when you look at Cleveland, you know they're gonna run the football. I mean, I mean it's it's a it's a couple of backs. You know, I think the one that reminds me the most of myself is Derrick Henry because he's, he's a big back. He's physical. He's even bigger than me. I'm six foot three. I played at two twenty five. I think he's six foot three. Played at two forty or two thirty five. He's he's a he's a big guy. But it's just amazing how they don't want to pay the running back. And it's almost look. We know this much here. The running back position is gonna be black black guys. It's the brothers. I mean, it's, it's just a fact. I mean, and that, and that's what it is. And I'm not saying that they're not paying them because they're black. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going that. But I think it's come down to to where the reporters have really and people start believing. This. They believe what they hear on the media. Oh, they, you don't need a back. You know, they throw the ball all the time. You know, that, that's what they need. It's it's like a person saying, you know, man, I I played high school football. You know, if I wouldn't hurt my knee. You know, I could have made it. I played college football. I could have hurt my knee. And I would tell him, look, man, let me tell you something. You could have got your ass, got your ass hurt. You know, you got to got ten guys. But I want my mama. One thing I will never forget, <laughs> Jackie, I still tell this story. I the guy's name. When you said the Coliseum, he got it. He was a defensive lineman. He got his pass busted. Burst. And he come to the sideline and say, they hidden out there. They, they, they <laughs> hidden out there. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do. That's you. what you're supposed to do, Eric. They're hidden out there. You're supposed to hit. <laughs> they are really hidden out there for real. <laughs> hey, Eric, I got to tell Eric. I just you got to tell bet, Eric, because we had this little uh, bet going between me and Jackie. Who would resemble you the most? For your running style, I said Derrick Henry. Did I say that? That's, a, that's exactly what he said, Eric. And I, and I thought to myself, I know I, I, they're about the same size, but I don't think Derrick is nearly as fast or as elusive as Eric was. So he just well, he just won a five dollar bet in stature, in stature, because yeah. you're both tall. In, sta in stature, right. right? No, no, he, stature, he, yeah. he doesn't run like I do. No, he, he doesn't have like the but, speed. But you know, Eric, ability. you had the best seat in the house. I did, because I remember when you came in as a rookie, rushed for over 1,800 yards, your rookie broke the NFL rushing record, and nobody had a better view than me, and when I tossed you that ball against the Jets, you were gone. He was gone. I, mean, I said, this boy can run. This boy can run. And you know what? In practice is one thing, but when you play in a game against Mark Gassino and and, and Joe Lyons and all, all these guys, guys. And these guys trying to Klecko, knock you out. Klecko, right, Joe Klecko, Joe Klecko, Joe oh, Klecko, yeah. Joe Klecko. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, Jack, Jack is a great fighter. You remember that game? Jack, Jack is a great fighter in that game. Yeah, yeah, we, we had a good day. Oh, yeah, that was a fun day. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey Eric, Eric, mm -hmm. you know, you wrote a book called Watch My Smoke. Right. And uh, you tell the, the story about a trans, in, trans Am that you somehow got from the people over there at Texas A&M. <laughs> and, you know, I was, it, it was a, at that particular time, it was a big controversy but now you're not supposed to pay guys. Yeah, yeah, back then. back then. But now, Eric, you got quarterbacks. For example, the quarterback at Ohio State is driving a Rolls Royce, and it's legal. Really? If you oh, were a player now, with these NIL image rules that they have for the college players now, do you think you would have gone to SMU or would you have gone to the highest bidder? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a, man, Jackie. That's a great question, Jackie. Uh, honestly, the way it is now. 
I mean, I, I still wanted to go to a school that I, I loved, but you know, I think SMU would have still been the highest bidder. They, they wouldn't pay a lot back then, to be honest with you. But you know, I, man, my, my mother wanted me to stay in Texas. I mean, at the time, and I, I mean, you know how it is. You know, you, you, you kind of do what your mom says. I think I'd have still stayed in Texas, and I'd have, I'd have got what I wanted in, in Texas. I think I got out of SMU. But yeah, I, I, I think, think it's great that these kids are. I, I, th- I think it's great that these kids are getting what they deserve because, like I always said, the, the, the NCAA is making all these money, this money off of not just the black players, white players, all the players. I mean, and 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 they can sell your jersey at the University of Southern Cal, a Reggie Bush jersey. They can make all the money off of Reggie Bush, but, but you can't make it. That's the beginning of, you know, you're getting a scholarship. But you pay for that 10 times mm-hmm. over. Like I always, I always felt that it was wrong, you know, and and I, I'm glad they've. I think it's, it's a lot of work still to do, but I do like the, the NIL deals. I, I look at for the players and their kids. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm knowing these guys. I'm I'm not envious. I'm not jealous of the players that's getting paid. I'm happy for them because guys before us, before you, they they set the standard. Yeah, you know, absolutely. This, this NIL, Jackie, that talking Eric's talking about is that I think if they're going to pay these guys this kind of money, they make a million bucks to play in college level. They should take their scholarship and give it to another potential scholarship person. That's an interesting. And then they have enough money to pay for their own scholarship, you know, and their room and board and stuff. So, I mean, they're making a lot of money now. If that's going to be legal, then they should open it up, help more, more kids. Well, I don't, I, don't know if I, I don't know if I'd agree with that because one of the things, one of the statues, in my opinion, in the sport is to be able to distinguish yourself, uh, you know, from everyone else. And if you yeah. have gone through junior high school and high school and junior college and you have proven that you are the best running back and they're willing to, to, to pay you this type of money, then you have earned that. There's no doubt about it. So I, I would disagree with you a little bit on that. I answer. got a question for Eric, though. The other question that Eric mm-hmm. wore number 19 in, uh, in college at SMU. Mm-hmm. But when he came to the Rams, he wore 29. Right. Okay, now they retired that jersey. Eric, you, you retired that jersey in L.A. So I had to tell, how did yeah. you come up with wearing number twenty nine? It's a it's a quarterback's uh, number. I mean, man, you, you, you don't you don't know that you don't. I, well, 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 first of all, I uh, I always wanted to have my own identity. I mean, my my favorite player was O.J. Simpson because I was a running back and he was big and tall and I wanted to play the position. And I didn't want to wear thirty two. I wanted to have my, my my own thing. So I, I took an odd number nineteen. And wow. and, and I said, well, in college also. So when I got to the Rams, I never get on draft when I got and. You know, I met, you know, you, Mr. 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 Hewitt. They said, hey, uh, you know, you know what, what, what number do you want? I said, what number? I want number 19. I said, son, you can't wear number 19. You know, that's the, that's a quarterback number. I was like, okay. <laughs> I said, what did they have? They had 25, 29, 45, 30, 32, and 34. I said, okay, I'll take 20. So I'm in the alley holding up number 25. I still have the picture. I'm holding up number 25. So um, when I got back to Dallas, that night, I flew back right after. My best friend picked me up, Charles Drayton, and he said, man, what, we talking? He said, what number did you take? I said, I took number 25, and I'll never forget his reply. He said, why you take that slow-ass number? That's a slow <laughs> number. <laughs> I'm like, he said, what, what, what numbers the hell? Why you take 19? I told him I couldn't wear 19. So when he, I told him what numbers they had. I said, why you take Making some really good points, Jackie. Yeah. You know, with these uh, with these numbers. And, you know, Don Hewitt, you remember what a boss he was. He mm-hmm. was amazing, you know, and, and you every time what he say? Well, every time we walk in the locker room, sign the ball, sign, sign the, the balls. balls. We sign all balls. those footballs. Man. How many how many balls did you we sign? Oh, Thousand? Oh man. Over the years we signed a lot of balls. Man, that was the first order of business when you walk in the locker room. Sign Remember? the balls. Before sign you even balls. before you even got undressed, exactly. you had to sign yeah. the balls. Sign you know, when, ball. when we get <laughs> Eric back on, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him, you know, a little bit about, you know, when he came into the league. You remember at that particular time the USFL was gobbling up Heisman Trophy winners right. left and right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you think about it, it, w- it was a huge surprise to many people that Eric Dickinson didn't go to the USFL. So I'm kind of curious as to why he didn't go to the NFL and if there was pressure yeah. on him to go yeah, well, to, Doug, to Doug the Flutie, USFL. Remember, as a quarterback, he was one of them. Absolutely. Mike uh, Rozier was another. Oh, Hers- yeah, Herschel Walker. Herschel, Herschel Walker. Walker. Yeah. Uh, anybody, in, in, you know, they aggressively went after the top skill guys. And yeah. and as you can see, Herschel Walker and Mike Rozier, they were two of the top backs to ever come into the pros out of college. They had yeah. a lot of they had a lot of success. So right. I'm, I'm a little bit curious as a, as a why, if Eric was tempted 
you know, to go to the USFA. Yeah, because that, that was 1983. Absolutely. And, uh, that was his rookie year. Right. And the USFL was coming along. They were spending a lot of money. Spending a lot of money. A lot more. They were spending them. a lot more money on the big name guys yeah. than the NFL was at that particular time. And and there was no there was no bigger name. You know, Eric was the second yeah. overall pick in 1983. So right, right. He, he probably would have been tempted to you know, to take that money. Yeah. I'm kind of curious as to whether he did or not. Yeah, I'm hoping he can, we can get him back up online. You yeah, know, yeah, get the, he probably had... The, maybe there's like a, a big storm or something going on in, in Buffalo, Buffalo right yeah, now. Uh, it's going to shut everything Another down, reason man. why it's good to be in Southern <laughs> California. <laughs> oh, man, boy. Jack, I tell you, playing in Buffalo, man, I can remember in, in the uh, in, in preseason, they had some wind storms. They had some rain and rain. And it was it raining so hard and windy so hard, you couldn't even throw the ball like 10 yards. It was amazing, mm. you know, and this this maybe what's going on right there. But he played golf, he said. So yeah. weather must be all right. Yeah, it must be all right. But you yeah. know that that prompts me to ask you a question now that we're talking about Buffalo and Eric is back there playing golf and everything. You know, yeah. you know, you you came to the Rams in 1977, the year yeah. after I did, and then and quickly established yourself as one of the one of the premier talents at your position. And then of course you know, after your, um, what, your third season, I believe it was. We, fourth we, season, yeah. You, it, was your, it was my fourth season, your third, when right. we went to Super Bowl right. fourteen. Right, And I remember what a dynamic presence you were on the field, in the huddle, as a leader, and all of that, and then as a talent. You know, mm -hmm. you had a big-time arm, made a lot of plays and everything. And then you, for some strange reason or another, as a couple of years had gone by, you you decide to hobble on off the bubble to, to Canada. <laughs> well, <laughs> we didn't so, have free agency so, back in that day, And Jack. so my question that I've yeah. always wondered, and I've asked you this a couple of times, but I'm going to ask you this again yeah. so that our viewers can actually hear you answer this question. Why in the world would you leave the Rams, which had a bunch of first-round picks on this offensive line, you were standing back there like a prima donna, every hair in his place, never got a bloody lip, nothing, no problems, and then you go running off to Canada, and every time I looked and I saw you on film in Canada, somebody was hitting you in the lips, <laughs> knocking you down. I was, I was all over the place, Jack. But, but I was remember playing in Buffalo, Big Ben Williams that was yes. playing him in there. And General Ben, yeah, General he, Ben, I, your General your ben Williams was, a, was a, an arch enemy of mine from all the way back in, in, in high school. I played against Ben Williams in the 11th grade. He went to Yazoo City High School while I was at Jackson Wingfield, and I played against him, and he was he was a nasty guy because yeah. he looked at me and he said, uh, you, 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 Did you, you teach him a lesson? You, he, said, he, he said, you can't block me. That's what he oh. said to me. And, you know, and I, and I struggled. Those are fighting words. I, I struggled. I struggled to deal oh, with him. Man. And then when we came to the pros, I walked to the line of scrimmage, and he says to me, you still can't block. <laughs> and before that game was over, Vince, yeah. he beat me with a sweet move. And you remember yeah. what happened then? Oh, you man. you I were was, like this. I was and spitting it, up blood. And his helmet, his, helmet, his helmet hit you somewhere in the rib cage. And I never will forget as I reached down and pulled your upper torso from the ground, the blood. <laughs> <laughs> can't run it out of your mouth there, Vince. I thought I had killed your graveyard was, uh, dead. You know, yeah, I was... It's one of those deals, Jackie. But you know what? When Je when Eric was talking about you know the position of running back, mm -hmm. and he was saying how what a great position it is. And you know, I, I'm a firm believer that it's a it's a definite very necessity in an NFL to have a good running back. Absolutely. Because not only does a running back run the football, he's got to be able to block, Jackie. He's got to be able to be a pass receiver. He's got to be able to do the whole thing, and they can incorporate the entire offense around, you know. But they need they need the running back. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, we want to thank you for uh, watching this uh, interview with Eric Dickerson, and uh, we're glad he could uh, make time with us. Jackie being uh, traveling on the East Coast, and you know that one little idiosyncrasy we wanted to ask him, Jackie. We didn't have time to, but uh, you know, had we had time to ask him, I wonder if he would have came up with that little thing that you used to do on the field. <laughs> That was different than anybody else did, but you you set an example. What was that? Uh, I'm sure he would have remembered that. That one of the things that I always was taught in college with yeah. Walter Payton, our, our our head coach would say, "Hey, we don't want this guy wasting any energy getting up off the ground. We want him to use every ounce of energy that he has running with the football." Right. So I learned that in college. So whenever Eric Dickinson got tackled, if I was within ten yards of him, I would sprint to him 
grab his hand, and snatch him up off the you ground. You did the same thing with Walter Payton. Did the exact same thing with Walter Payton. That, that was a kind of cool. Both little sensational thing to have. running backs, now like one and two and absolutely yards dynamic and, uh, guys. Now, I was very fortunate, Ben. And who was that offensive line coach? Hudson Howe. Yeah, Hudson Howe, the offensive line coach at the Rams at that time. Right. Is that actually, right? is the same offensive line coach that Emmitt Smith had at Dallas when he right. won, established himself as the NFL all-time leading ground game. Hudson Howe was a fantastic coach. Well, we want to thank you all for watching right here from the Manhattan Beach Studios. So uh, continue to watch us on On Point Live with Vince and Jackie. We're on our YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe. So until then, stay, stay on point. point.